Back to In the Huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay offensive lineman T.J. Lang. And good evening, everyone. Back to the fifth quarter in Little Shoot. Treat yourself and your colleagues and friends to the ultimate luxury at Sunday's Lions-Packers game. Why not sit in the best seats at Lambeau Field? The Packers' official company Packer fan tours can put you in the skyboxes for a fraction of what you'd expect. And every seat includes a free three-hour tailgate party. Complete 20-person skybox for the low, low price of $7,900. 10-person partial skybox, only $3,950, or you can pay by the seat, $399 per person. Call Packer Fan Tours at 920-P-A-C-K-E-R-S between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. tomorrow. Mention you heard it on In the Huddle. Again, that's 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. at 920-P-A-C-K-E-R-S. Mention you heard it on In the Huddle. Packer Fan Tours offers ticket packages for all your Packers game needs, home and away in any quantity and locations from end zone to midfield with new specials on sale now. But that Skybot package, go into your boss's office and you get to work in the morning and say, hey, come on, it's about time. You open your wallet a little bit. Why don't you take the whole company to the Packers-Lions game and in the Skybox, they got a great deal. Low price, yeah, yeah. seventy nine hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, so we got that going for us. All right, it is uh, time now to uh, uh, welcome our uh, special guest of the program. He's uh, a, a, a out of Grand Valley State University, signed with the uh, Green Bay Packers, and uh, as an undrafted free agent, he is Nick McDonald. Nick, welcome. Thank you. Nick helped uh, lead Grand Valley State to the 2009 NCAA Division II National Championship game. Lost that game to Northwest Missouri State 30-23, to but anytime you're playing in a championship game, that's a great experience. Oh, yeah, it was pretty special. I mean, that was actually the third time I got to play in a championship game. So anytime you can get to, you know, the highest game in that level, it's uh, pretty special. When you see uh, TJ, you see a, a young guy like Nick come in, uh, and, and he makes the, uh, the 53 as an undrafted free agent. Uh, you know, your, your thoughts on, on, on seeing him when he first got here and, uh, and, and what your initial thoughts were? Uh, the first thing that stuck out with Nick is, I mean, is his work ethic. I mean, the guy's, you know, he's getting in early, he's doing the right things. Um, you know, he's, he's doing what the coaches ask. And he did a great job throughout uh, OTAs. And, you know, we all, we all realized once we saw him that, you know, he was going uh, to be a free agent that pushed to make the team. So, uh, you know, him and Frank Zombo we had on the show a couple weeks ago, I mean, they're, they're very, very similar guys. You know, they actually come from the same hometown. And they both possess the same type of, you know, attitude towards the uh, towards job. And, um, you know, even, even when Nick made the team, he still wasn't satisfied. He, he wanted to, you know, keep pushing for playing time. So uh, I think that's a tribute to Nick. I mean, he's, he's done an outstanding job so far. Every time you, uh, you stepped on the field, Nick, you really took advantage of your opportunities. And you were one of the guys. And, and obviously, it takes a uh, free agent, undrafted free agent player. You really got to stand out. You got to do a little bit extra. Uh, when, when did you think you had that chance? Um, I guess after just watching the game film, you know, We'd sit in the locker room, <clears throat> sit in the meeting rooms, and we'd watch the film. And, you know, I thought I played well every single game. And I think the coaches, you know, some of the coaches came up to me and they didn't keep doing what you're doing. You're playing well. You know, and I just figured if I keep doing that. Yeah, it, it was every, every time you stood out, but even the head coach, you know, every time he talked in press conference, I mean, your name was constantly coming up. And in a good way, and, and that's, a, that's a good thing. I mean, Frank Zombo, another undrafted free agent. I mean, there, Sam Shields, another undrafted free agent. It's, it's really uh, uh, something that doesn't happen every day to see three of them make a football team, especially one that is a playoff caliber football team. So that speaks very highly, of, obviously, of you guys. Yeah, I mean, with us, we got to take, I'm like, we we're going into it, we we're taking it one day at a time. And, you know, we knew our chances. You know, we're probably low. We didn't really know what was going to happen, but, you know, I think, you know, me, Sam, and <clears throat> Frank all possess, you know, what it takes to play in this league. Mm -hmm. what, what do you remember most about going through training camp and uh, your, your, your thoughts on that, that first process? Well, it's pretty stressful. I mean, you go in not really knowing what's going to happen. You know, you don't really get as many reps as you want. and. You know, you're learning. I mean, the playbook that we had during camp was, I mean, huge. You know, and you're learning, you know, a different scheme, and you got to learn it fast. And it was pretty stressful, but um, all in all, you know, I had a great time. It was fun. Got to go out there and play with, 
you know, live my dream. So mm -hmm. sometimes a, a player uh, of undrafted caliber type free agent. Sometimes you're just looking at the chance to hook onto the practice squad, and you, and you never want to admit that you're you, you're willing to settle for less until that opportunity presents itself. Um, but it, but in this case, there weren't a lot of people talking about you as when I mean, they were ready to boom put you right on the 53. And, and anything I uh, anything I read and anything I looked at uh, pretty much had you pegged there. But were you were you thinking, hey, if I can even just get on the practice squad, that would be all right? Um, I mean, my goal going into it was like making the 53 mm -hmm. that's what I wanted and obviously you know if I made the practice squad I'd have to I'd have to settle with it and um but you know, going into it I wanted to make that was my goal because yeah. I mean if you go into it thinking all right well my goal is to at least make the 53 I mean I like to set high expectations for myself and um so like I said yeah 53 was my goal yeah when you uh obviously you have the pick of the litter were other teams calling you when it came to time to sign a contract? Yeah, I mean, during the draft, um, I actually got a call like seventh round. Um, a couple of teams like, hey, we don't have many picks left. You know, we we want to we want to see if we can get you with one of them. If not, we want to sign as a free agent. And I kind of left it up to my agent. Um, I told him where I really wanted to go, and Green Bay was definitely my top pick. And um, he just felt it would be a perfect spot for me. Mm -hmm. So how many teams were there? It was like four, I think, okay. four or five. So, so Green Bay obviously was there. What, what did you like about Green Bay? Just you felt the opportunity was best there? Or? That, and then when I came on a pre-draft visit, and um, it was just awesome. I love the city. You know, we're both you know, from around the same area, so it's a little different here. And, um, you know, I got to sit, sit down with all the coaches, Coach Camp and Jerry and, you know, Philbin. And, I had to sit down with those guys and have a normal conversation, you know, tell me what they felt. They were honest with me, and I left there with a really good feeling. I felt really comfortable with them. Now, I asked TJ, because you're from the same state and the same area, if, if before the show, if he, uh, if he had known about you or ever heard of you, and he said he hadn't, uh, how about the other way? Did, did you know who TJ was? Um, no, actually, I didn't, but I knew, he, I knew his, uh, a couple of his buddies that played um, high school with him, but I didn't really hear anything about him. Yeah, me and Nick, I mean, we were, we were very similar in high school. Uh, we had to, you know, work our tail off to get where we are today. And, uh, you know, I don't think Nick had any Division One offers. And, uh, you know, you don't really see many guys in the NFL that didn't play Division One football. So uh, I think I, I had one Division One offer and, um, you know, I ended up choosing Eastern Michigan. But, uh, you know, that says the, the path that we've both taken and to, uh, you know, really come from being, you know, a guy that's, you know, not expected to do much to, you know, where we're sitting at today. So, uh, we, you know, we, both possess you know, you know, very hard work ethics, and uh, you know I think that's it, it shows where we're, we've gotten ourselves so far. You have a, uh, a degree in criminal justice. Yep. What, what are your plans for that? Um, my plans were actually probably law enforcement. Eventually, I was going to go the uh, military route um, if football didn't work out. Uh, both my parents were in the military, so um, kind of like that. But probably, you know, football ends tomorrow. I'd probably go into law enforcement of some yeah. sort. Any particular interest at all? Um, I mean, I'd like to go federal, something like that. Maybe, you know, a marshal, U.S. Marshals, I always thought. But, I mean, I'm not really sure right now. I'm just yeah. kind of concentrating on what's happening now. You'd probably play one in a movie or something, you know. FBI guy or Rambo, maybe. Yeah, maybe Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's pretty. You know, he's pretty, pretty good shape. Pretty yeah. well chiseled. Yeah, everybody. Uh, Off there's not a lot of offensive linemen that look like you, Nick. I gotta admit. I mean, look at TJ. <laughs> TJ. <doesn't> look <laughs> <laughs> TJ looks more like me. You know. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> We call TJ the uh, the chubby leprechaun. But that's not true. I've never heard him say that before. <laughs> well, <laughs> but uh, you know, that's just. I mean, you know, I compliment to you. So, <laughs> sorry, TJ. TJ. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Sorry yeah, you about can that. start posting the show now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't forget. Each week, we'll reward our email participant with a two-night stay and lift tickets for two for two days to Granite Peak. So, don't forget to email us your question of the week to us at inthehuddleshow.com. We'll be back with more with our special guest Nick McDonald, along with my co-host TJ Lang. Back with more from the fifth quarter in Little Shoot. After this on the Woodward Radio Network. <laughs>